presidente, uh, mi nombre es Alfonso López, soy el primer delegado del Partido Demócrata Latino en la historia de Virginia. Hello everybody, my name is Alfonso López, I'm the first Latino Democrat ever elected to the Virginia General Assembly. Yeah! Yeah! I didn't like to call There we go, there we go. Um, I represent uh, Darlhedra Mosque, and I represent uh, South Arlington and Eastern Fairfax. And what that means is it's basically everything from Pentagon City to Bailey's Crossroads with Columbia Pike is the spine of my district. And let me just tell you a story. On the first day of my orientation six years ago, we were all talking about our districts. There were 16 freshmen, 15 Republicans, and I was the only Democrat. It was a bad year for Democrats. And I said, well, there are 108 languages spoken in my district and 58 languages spoken in my local high school, Wakefield High School. 108 languages spoken in my district and 58 languages spoken at Wakefield High School. And a delegate uh, from Southside, Virginia, got up and he said, son, there ain't but 100 languages spoken in the world. <laughs> and I laughed, just like you. And I thought he was joking. And he wasn't, he was serious. And I, I said, well, there are 412 languages spoken in Indonesia and 4,000 languages spoken just in Africa. And it took me three days to prove that there are 108 languages spoken in my district. But that's sort of emblematic of what I feel like I'm having to do a lot of the time. Virginia is an immense state in terms of size. If you go down to the furthest points of Virginia, we're closer to five other state capitals than you are to Richmond. If you go straight north, you hit Detroit. The old joke is that Virginia is really nine different states. But I feel like I'm having to explain the rich tapestry of what we are here to folks in other parts of Virginia who either don't see diversity or don't want to see diversity. Let me give you an example. Before I was elected in 2011, uh, my predecessor, now State Senator Adam Evan, invited, uh, <laughs> invited the imam. <laughs> there we go. G gave it, it, what we do a lot is, um, it's very formal. We come, into, we come into session every day at noon, just and we bring the mace in, which is brought over from England, and the Virginia General Assembly has been in existence for 400 years. We're the oldest serving, or longest continuously serving legislative body in the new world. And we t we're very proud of that, but we do a lot of things that we've done since the founding of Jamestown. <coughs> and one of them is to have a prayer. And we invite religious leaders, and everyone's able to invite someone. And Adam Evan invited Imam Johari. And this was five, six years ago. And you would not believe the uproar this caused. And what was wonderful about his prayer was after all of this uproar, and after people who called themselves Christians got up and walked out, as opposed to listen to Imam Johari. The Imam delivered one of the most touching and inclusive and kind and open-hearted prayers anybody had ever heard. And when we talk about bringing together a community, it's important, as the Imam mentioned, that instead of actually reacting with hate, or derision, or as I find myself doing a lot of the time, incredulity, like, or just snarkiness. <laughs> you can't be serious, right? You don't really think that. You're a human being, right? You are educated, correct? Um, what you should do is embrace with hope, and with love, and with understanding. And by being together from all of our different groups, that's a, a, 
a wonderful thing that we're here and that we're moving in that positive step in that positive direction. Um, and I don't, I was mentioning to my table, I don't feel I'm, I can speak adequate, adequately to what needs to be said right now because of what's going on nationally and with the rhetoric and the ugliness that we're seeing that's incredibly divisive and that people will take advantage of something so petty and small in order to have a little bit more political advantage in the short term, while in the long term, tearing down what we are as a country. And so, I'm definitely not adequate to the task, or up to the task, of sort of encapsulating everything I'm trying to do in Richmond and that all of my colleagues are trying to do, Virginia being the home of religious freedom in the United States. <laughs> but let me give you one example. After a summer of Trump, if you wanted to be a, uh, a friend of the Tea Party, I don't want to get too political, but a friend of the Tea Party, before this session, you put forward legislation saying that Syrian refugees were your enemy and that Virginia should not allow any state money to be used to address or care for the women and children and families fleeing the worst refugee crisis since World War II. And it's surprising the number of folks who supported or signed on to that legislation. And I got up once and I simply said, if you knew the Darl Hidra Mosque, if you knew the diversity of my community, and if you knew how DHS, the CIA, and the State Department work to create a refugee or designate someone as a refugee in the United States, these ugly bills would have never seen the light of day. And so I would only ask each of you to not only build on what you're doing today, but reach one and touch 10, touch 100, because we get it here in this community. But there are parts of Virginia that need to also get it and to also hear for the first time, really, that diversity is good. Diversity makes us stronger. Diversity makes us richer. And diversity makes us stand firmer and taller with our founding values. So thank you for the opportunity to speak today. And uh, appreciate it. Alfonso! My man, thank you.